I reached out to you guys on Instagram and asked about your questions on astrophotography. And the one that got me the most will now be answered. Let's talk about the one thing that improves our images drastically. In my opinion, the most important correction frame. Let's talk about flat frames. Along with darks and bias, flat frames are acquired to be subtracted from our light frames, to clean up errors that exist in our entire optical train. While the first two aim to correct dark current and hot pixels of your camera sensor, flat frames are used to correct the uneven field illumination of your telescope, which is also known as vignetting. This is an error produced by every optical system, and it gets worse with shorter focal lengths. The vignetting of a typical refractor might not be that apparent and could be edited out in post without flats. But that is not the only reason why they are taken. No matter how good you clean your optics. Dust, scratches and cold pixels are always there. A tiny piece of dust can become pretty annoying in stacking. And if one single dust mode covers parts of your object, you're in for a nightmare. They say dust never sleeps, and that is true. It can move around in your imaging train every night. And especially with the DSLR, every click of the shutter and the mirror can reorganize these beautiful patterns. That is why flats are best taken every imaging night. Right after finishing up your light frames, prepare taking the flat frame. Here's what you need to do. The entire field of view of your telescope must be lit by an even light source. There are several ways to achieve this. First, you can take sky flats. If you can leave your telescope set up until morning, the dawn sky is your best light source. Now you have to cover your telescope with a piece of white cloth to achieve the even illumination. I use a piece of white cloth and a rubber band to keep it tight. But if you are in the same situation as me and you can't leave your telescope set up until morning, you need to take the flat frames in the night. Cover your telescope with a cloth and get a source of light. Some people build flat boxes which can be attached to the front of your telescope. I will leave a link to a good article about those in the description. But if you are lazy or not good at building stuff, there are other ways. I use my tablet, turn the display to maximum brightness and display a wide image. This method will work for most refractor telescopes and camera lenses. If you own a bigger mirror telescope like a Newtonian, very famous beginner telescopes, you either need to shoot sky flats or get a bigger light source. If you never heard about flats before, I recommend you to get a pen and a piece of paper. Most imaging softwares have options to automate the process of finding the correct exposure time. Very handy. Set the same ISO as in your light frames and keep the existing focus and camera rotation. Very important. And I probably don't need to mention that the flats have to be shot in RAW. Every part of your image must be lit evenly and nothing should be in focus. If this is your first time shooting flats, I recommend to set the camera to manual and play with the exposure time to get the best result. But what is the correct exposure time? Let's look at the histogram. We want a spike that is at the mid-range, ideally between one third and one half of the full range. If you work with filters, like a light pollution filter for example, don't worry if one of the channels is weaker or stronger than the others. As long as this channel is not over or underexposed, you're good to go. Do not take flats with more than 80% or less than 20% of the full range. The shorter the exposure time, the better. If you can, set your light source to the maximum brightness and lower the shutter speed. To avoid harsh readout noise, set a pause of at least one second to avoid buffering. High exposure times of more than 10 seconds will most likely inject dark noise, which is better to avoid. The color of a flat frame does not matter. Most of the times, the channels are stacked and applied individually. Speaking about stacking, how many flats do we have to take? You will find lots of ideas and theories about the number of flat frames, just like with darks and bias. Some people say 5 are enough, and some people say 100 is the minimum you should shoot. The individual flat frames are stacked into a master flat to be subtracted from a light frame. Let's take the gradients in your lights as an example. The vignetting in your master light will be smooth and soft because it's stacked. Trying to correct this even light falloff with let's say 5 flats 
with an image that is not even and not smooth will never give you the result you want. With this argumentation, taking the same number of lights and flats would make sense. And that is true. But if you sit on a great project with hundreds of light frames, the same number of flat frames would slow down this process significantly. Thinking about your disk space and editing speed, 100 flats are good, but maybe a bit too much. It's the same reasoning as with oversampling. Too much is not bad, but it's not good either. I researched many websites and read books about these numbers. And now listen to me. DSLR flats, 25 to 50. Flat frames for a dedicated astronomy camera, 33. Why exactly should we take 33 flats with a dedicated camera, you might ask? Thanks for asking. As a disclaimer, I will now shorten dedicated astronomy cameras with CCDs, even though that is not always the case. CCD cameras are not specialized to take short exposures. And there is another factor you have to keep in mind. The ADU range. ADU stands for Analog to Digital Unit and determines of how many data units your image is made of. It is closely connected with the electronic gain, which is measured in electrons per ADU. Most of the times the E gain will be 1, meaning that one electron will be converted into one digital unit. An insane number which DSLRs can't handle. But this is a weakness when it comes to flat frames, because there's so much light that the pixels can easily saturate. The gain has to be the same as in your light frames, just like the ISO with a DSLR. But that means that we have to change the ADU range to get the histogram we need. APT, for example, has a feature called CCD Flats 8. You give the software the ADU number you want, and it tries to work out the best exposure time possible. I assume most of you have APT, it's the most basic software one can stumble upon. The perfect ADU for a CCD master flat. 1 million, which is 33 times 30,000 data units. In this case, more is not better, but it won't make the result worse either. Set the tool's ADU range to 30,000 and try to get the correct exposure time that gets the histogram right. I can only explain how to work with flat frames in the three softwares I've used so far. Deep Sky Stacker, Astro Pixel Processor and PixInsight. The settings you can change in DSS refer to the pixel rejection algorithm. If you have a minimum of 30 frames, go for Kappa Sigma clipping with a Kappa of 5 and a Sigma of 2. Short explanation of what will happen. Every pixel that does not behave the way it should, according to a mathematical expression, will be replaced by the median value of the pixels around it. This will create the best possible master flat, which will be automatically subtracted from your light frames. In APP, this process is divided into the integration method and the outlayer rejection. Go for average if you have more than 20 frames, or for median if you have less. The best outlayer rejection method is Windsor Clip, which is the same as in DSS. In PixInsight, this process is a bit more complicated. I wonder why. First, you need to calibrate your individual flat frames with a master bias frame. The image calibration tool can take care of that. The calibrated flat frames can now be stacked by the image integration tool into a master flat frame. If you want my settings, here they are. The most important settings are the outlayer rejection and the multiplicative normalization method, which is a tongue twister in and for itself. Choose the multiplicative normalization method and the outlier rejection according to this graph. We're almost at the end, but not quite yet. If you work on a bigger project, note the following things. You have to take flat frames for each night and each filter used. For example, for a multi-session LHA RGB image, you would need 5 master flats for each night. The color of a flat frame does not matter if you stay in the one third to one half range. But changing the temperature during the night with different color filters will make a difference. To keep it simple, keep the same temperature the whole night, if you can. I know I can't cover every type of equipment which is used to take flat frames. If you have any more questions, feel free to add them down below. My name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.